The Netherlands is a major seafaring nation with former colonies around the globe. First multinational corporation in the form of the Dutch East Indies Company. Major ports that are still today key entry points into Europe for many foreign goods. The Netherlands GDP is estimated to be around $1 trillion for 2019. It accomplished this thanks to foreign trade, banking and financing, specialized high-tech companies, agricultural, engineering, especially water engineering. One sometimes overlooked important source of income is the really really large natural gas belt, which was found in the northeast of the country in 1959. The Netherlands is ranked 17th in GDP globally, but they accomplish that with less than 17 million people. With Britain's departure from the European Union approaching, the Netherlands is bracing for Brexit shockwaves. The country's economy relies heavily on imports and exports with Britain, some of which run through Rotterdam, Europe's biggest shipping port. The Netherlands is working to minimize the damage, in part by attracting some of the organizations and businesses that have already fled the United Kingdom. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. The Netherlands has a prosperous and open economy, which depends heavily on foreign trade. The economy is noted for stable industrial relations, fairly low unemployment and inflation, a very big sizable current account surplus, and an important role as a European transportation hub, with Rotterdam as far out the biggest port in Europe and Amsterdam as one of the biggest airports in Europe. Industrial activity is predominantly in food processing, chemicals, petroleum refining, high-tech, financial services, creative sector, and electrical machinery. A highly mechanized agricultural sector employs no more than 2% of the labor force but provides large surpluses for the food processing industry and for exports. Agriculture in the Netherlands is only 15.8% of the GDP, but it's a remarkable performer for such a small country. Second only to the USA, a country that's more than 200 times larger, in agricultural exports worldwide. The Netherlands is the third largest exporter of fruit and vegetables worldwide. More than half of the land area is for agricultural production. Agricultural productivity is five times the average in Europe. The Dutch have a strong economy, highly dependent on trade. That's why world economics impacts the economy strongly when it goes either up or down. The Dutch have an economy based on knowledge. This gives them the possibility to add value to products they trade. The Dutch have, despite the size of their country, a large agricultural export. The Dutch are experts on water management. The Netherlands is also known for providing tax havens to multinational companies. The Netherlands has a high income tax rate of over 50% for top earners, it has a corporate tax rate of 25%, and there are not even particularly strict laws around things like banking privacy like there are in countries like Switzerland. The Netherlands has discovered natural gas since the 1950s. This has given it an extra 200 billion euros, which is half the entire Belgian debt. The Netherlands is super tiny. Everything has to be spaced out perfectly because the country is just too small. A pro is that you don't need a car in the Netherlands. There is cheap and efficient public transport. Always have a seat on the train and free Wi-Fi. The Netherlands has become a global leader in implementing the tenets of a circular economy, a radical new approach to sustainable living that focuses on reducing consumption, minimizing waste, and reusing nearly everything. The Dutch economy grew by 0.4% on quarter in the three months to September 2019, the same pace as in the previous period, and matching the preliminary estimate. Growth was mainly driven by public spending, inventory changes, and household consumption. GDP growth rate in the Netherlands averaged 0.54% from 1988 until 2019, reaching an all-time high of 1.70% in the first quarter of 1999 and a record low of minus 3.60% in the first quarter of 2009. Numbers apart, practically the growth is visible. Five years back, many offices and houses in major cities had Te Huur for rent, Te Coop for sale posters. Now there are very few such posters and on offices, while houses mostly have verkoked, sold posters. Another way is that rentals have gone up, this happens when people have more money to spend. Also, the outlook looks confident as house prices have gone up by 22%, which means people are confident about long-term investment. Amsterdam house prices rose 22% in a year. The shops which were empty due to foreclosures a few years back have been again occupied, this is a significant improvement in local business and spending. 
The Netherlands has a prominent position in the European distribution network and in the Benelux through the presence of the ports of Rotterdam and Amsterdam's Schiphol Airport, and the European hinterland. In addition, the Netherlands has a connection to the Euro corridors, important motorway connections to and from large population and production concentrations on the European continent, the major rivers such as waterways, and the dense rail network. Almost 2 million square meters of distribution centers were put into use last year about as many as 400 football fields. In the coming years, the number of block boxes along highways and on company premises will grow considerably. Large international companies, in particular, stand in line to supply Europe from the Netherlands. In the southern Netherlands, with 53,000 vacancies, there is already a significant shortage of staff. Over 60,000 new jobs were created in this sector in two years. Currently, many companies are recruiting in Spain and Eastern Europe. Schiphol Airport is one of the best airports in the world and offers more direct flights than any airport in the world. It's super easy to get to 15 minutes on a train that runs every few minutes from Amsterdam, which makes flying anywhere super convenient. Many mega distribution centers are currently being built in the Netherlands. The demand is so great to build a mega distribution center that there is almost no space left in the Netherlands. The distribution centers are now constructed mainly in the borders of the Netherlands. This is also convenient so that goods can be transported to neighboring countries. The Netherlands has a flexible working culture. The Dutch are champions in Europe to work on the weekends or evenings. Three out of ten Dutch employees in all branches occasionally work in the evenings and weekends. The law in the Netherlands offers a great deal of flexibility, and e-commerce naturally responds to this. The Netherlands become rich thanks to trade, and its colonial past remember, New York used to be New Amsterdam, which also included certain spice monopolies in what's now Indonesia and a touch of Calvinism, don't show off and save your money. And the trade-enabling location is a gateway to mainland Europe due to not only sea access but also great infrastructure over rivers and land deep into Europe. Additionally, I would say that traditional openness and tolerance also played an integral part. This attracted, for example, thinkers such as Descartes, which helped shape a rich intellectual tradition, reflected in much leading research being done in many fields. Also, a can do mentality. It is sometimes said that God made the earth, but the Dutch made the Netherlands. About a third of the country is below sea level, and almost 60% is at constant risk of being flooded. Dealing with this has set unique challenges, which likely have to lead to a unique skill set and attitude. During the Dutch Golden Age around the 17th and 18th centuries. The Dutch were trading spices in India and setting up colonies in the far Southeast Asia, South Africa, and Eastern America. Plus, they largely usurped the Hanseatic League's trading around the Baltic Sea. The Dutch East India Company was the first multinational to set up the first modern stock exchange and the first central bank. Their positioning around the Lower Rhine gave them easy access to markets down the Rhine, deep into Germany. The discovery of gas, and also a bit of oil in the North Sea have helped, but only in a later stage. Now, the wind is potentially a natural resource to be leveraged. The Dutchmen are humble, organized, hardworking, and not overspending. The Dutchmen work hard and save every penny. They are not big spenders. They do not like to show off with their wealth. They save money for their children and them on their turn for theirs, thus accumulating and passing on wealth to the next generation. Apart from that, they are people who are very eager to learn and are very innovative. Educating and developing oneself is an important and leading sentiment in Dutch society. They have some of the oldest universities, such as Leiden and Delft, and if you want to educate yourself, there is always an opportunity or scholarship. Education is comparing to most nations in the West, not expensive. Dutchmen are traditionally explorers and traders, and the Netherlands is not their universe nor the end of the universe. They spread their horizons and go out and do business abroad. They quickly came to the conclusion that you need to collaborate and share knowledge if you want to grow and mean something in the community. Amsterdam and Rotterdam are important to import and export ports of Europe. They also have great multinationals like Philips, Axo, Shell, and Unilever. They export cheese and flowers. They are able to gain land from the sea, such as Flevoland, which is below sea level. They created Palm Island in Dubai. This is built with Dutch technology. And last and not least, they are very social and look after others who do not so well. It's all in the mentality of the Dutchman.
Dutch is among the first to have come up with the idea of colonization. They were pioneers in the exploration of new trade routes to Southeast Asia in the 16th century and subsequently managed to control global spice trade during the second half of the 17th century. Needless to say, their aggressive expansion and subjugation of the region were at the expense of less technologically developed peaceful nations of Southeast Asia namely Indonesia. They accumulated capital through not very chivalric methods but obviously made good use of their money. The capital was directed at state and corporate institutionalism, education, and technology for many decades, which in turn helped establish a high standard of living easily achievable by all citizens, regardless of what they do for a living. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.